Asbury United Methodist Church, welcome to our first worship online. This last week has been a crazy, crazy upturn in how we live our day-to-day -day life. And now we find ourselves in a situation where we must draw apart from one another to show God's love for one another. So as we worship online for the next few weeks, or for however long we need to worship online, may we do so knowing that in God's spirit, we are still united. And while all our other events are canceled at Asbury, and while so many things are shut down, and we are trying to figure out our way forward in this anxious and, and fearful season, may we remind ourselves and declare boldly that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Even in the midst of a viral outbreak, and even in the midst of quarantines and these measures, God is good all the time. Take courage and trust that God is going to work all things to good, even in this moment. Would you please pray with me? Father, walk with us through this challenging season. Show us your goodness and your love. And Father, help Asbury United Methodist Church, help our brothers and sisters in Christ remain in community and check up on one another and be there for one another, even in the midst of our physical separation. Father, make your love known to us and use this time alone with our families or by ourselves to be a place where we can grow in our trust of you. May we dedicate this time to prayer, to interceding for our country, for our church, for our city, and for the world so that we might draw near to you and when we are finally through all of this, all the things that are going on, Father, I pray that you reunite us with such joy that we are able to deeply and wonderfully express the love that you have given us while we are apart. And Father, may we rest in the hope that comes from you, that we will get through this and be reunited again in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
morning, everyone. Please join me in the reciting of Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. As he ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <music>
And this means that they are suddenly having to figure out how to get their groceries and their prescriptions without leaving their houses. Jesus told the Jews that they're supposed to follow the directions of the government by giving Caesar what belongs to Caesar. After all, the image of the coin bears the Caesar's face. But he also tells us that we need to give to God what belongs to God. And each and every one of us are image bearers of God. So we need to live our lives in a way that honors and pleases him. Following the rules set out for us not only keeps ourselves safe and healthy, but it also protects the people around us who we love. If we go back to our bubble wrap and we start to give each person a home inside these bubbles, you know, we could have Jane living here, Lucy over here. We could have Anakin here and Brooke over here. We could have Gage and Jackson and Camry and Ethan. If everybody was given a home, it would look like we were very spread apart. But when we start filling in all of our church members' names and we put them close together, all in their own little bubble, not touching, we can get a different picture of the body of Christ. None of our homes are touching. None of us are interacting. We're not physically holding hands. But when we're together in spirit, we can still sh act as the body of Christ. So as we go about this week, look for ways that you can show love to others a little bit differently than normal. Maybe you can write a letter. Maybe you can sit at your window and wave to all the people walking by. Maybe you can send a video to somebody and tell them that you love them and you miss them. Let's all be creative and let's all be smart and safe by following the rules and we'll get to be together soon enough. Let's take a minute to pray. Lord, we come to you and we know that we are in a time of separation, which really kind of makes it hard. But help us to take this time to think about how to creatively show your image to the world. Help us to love each other. Help us to look out for each other. Help us to not get discouraged because we can't be close. And help us to think outside of the box. Amen. Part of our worship is giving back the gifts and the blessings that we have to God. And I know not only are we in the midst of a, a lockdown and we are, are caught up by ourselves in this season, but we are also looking at a very large recession. And in that time, though, I still think we can find ways where we can acknowledge that God has blessed us and where we can share our resources. In this video, underneath it, there's a link to how you can give online at Asbury United Methodist Church. And I would encourage you to include that as part of your worship. But I'd also encourage you to do this. Right now, in the midst of this season, we all have neighbors and friends that need, that desperately need resources. And so I would encourage you to take time to look for the people that need help around you and share with them. And I'm going to offer a prayer that blesses both the offerings that you, you give and share with the church, but also the offerings that, that might not ever get counted except by the people's lives they change. So I hope that you will pray with me. Father, we thank you for all the gifts you have given us. Father, even though we're in a trying time, we can look around at the blessings we have and the security that we enjoy. And Father, know that you are the author of all good things for our sake. But Father, I pray that you help us to still worship you through giving to you and giving to our neighbors and caring for them as they are around us. Father, help us to have hearts for those that you've called us to love and let us express that love by sharing with one another listening to one another, and being there for one another, even when we physically have to be distant. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.
engage in our, our time of congregational prayer this morning, we have to do things a, a little bit differently. Because we are sharing this video on, on YouTube, there's a chance for it to be spread uh, beyond our immediate church family. And because of this, uh, we need to be more careful with how we present health concerns uh, to you. So while we have members of our church that are, that are in the hospital and need help, we are going to have to communicate those to you through email and, and by other means at, during this season so that we can uh, limit the number of people to whom we are sharing uh, uh, private details and information. However, during this season, we also need to be praying for the leaders in our civic government, leaders in our state government, and leaders in our national government, and across the whole world. We need to be praying for the leaders in, in our church, both our home church here at Asbury, and then outside this in the United Methodist Church and all the churches as we seek uh, to, to be the body of Christ in this season. And more than anything, and probably more than any of those that came before, we need to pray and lift up our police, our fire workers, and our medical workers during this season. They are putting in well beyond the call that they have been given to work. And so we need to lift them up in prayer and support them in whatever ways we can. Please pray with me. Father, we ask for your guidance to be upon those who serve us. For David Turner, our mayor, for Greg Abbott, our governor, and for President Donald Trump, we ask that you would guide them and give them wisdom to seek your will and to live it out in this world so that they might guide us through this difficult time. Father, we pray for ourselves and for our church leaders that you would help all of us to seek your will and to live it out and to find creative ways of being your hands and feet when we can't shake hands or be too close with one another during this time. And Father, more than anything, we ask for your protection upon the police, the fire department, the emergency medical services, upon nurses and doctors, and all those who work in the hospital. Father, walk with them during this time. Keep them safe from this virus. And Father, help us to help them in whatever way we can. Father, use us in this time to be your hands and your feet. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in the reading of our scripture this morning, Mark 12, verses 13 through 17. Then they sent to him some Pharisees and Herodians to trap him in what he said. And they came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but, the teach, but teach the way of God in the accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay the taxes or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me Daenerys and let me see it. And they brought him one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title is this? They answered to him, It's the emperor's. Jesus said to them, Give the emperor the things that are his, and to God, the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. Thank you, Stacy, for reading the scripture. Would y'all please go to the Lord in prayer with me? Father, speak to us. Speak to us in blessings, speak, and let us know your heart in this time. Help us, even in our time apart, come to know you more. And Father, deepen and enrich our love for you and for our neighbor. Amen. This particular passage of scripture uh, is one of my favorites. And I find it odd that, of course, it is this particular week that I find myself uh, preaching in a nice, empty, and quiet library or an empty sanctuary uh, and not having you guys around. Because one of my favorite things to do with this passage is to get a group of people to, to kind of come forward and, and act it out, usually with sort of an improv pantomime. And uh, and now I can't do that. 
And I think many of you right now are probably thinking to yourselves in your head, thank goodness we're doing church online just so you could have the uh, avoidance of, of having me call on you randomly to engage in a, uh, a, a drama in front of the whole, whole congregation. Uh, but it actually makes it difficult for me to kind of uh, not have the physical representation of the story, but have to uh, work on telling you the story with words. And so let me, let me make my attempt of placing you in this time and this story as we examine the ways that Jesus gives us reversals, uh, uh, changes in direction in Scripture, and, and uses those reversals to uh, pull us to more full appreciation of his call and his love for us and how he calls, to, calls us to live out that love. This story starts out with uh, a group of, of Jews. These are, it's a mixed group. It's a group of Herodians and a group of Pharisees that are going to, to find Jesus and trying and making an attempt to trick him into exposing uh, hypocrisy or exposing himself to the public. They want to trick him and trap him to be able to discredit him to the crowds. You know, when Jesus go, is going across uh, Israel, and as he's preaching, he is drawing ever and ever large groups to themselves. And, and the Jews are growing fearful that the Romans might have a, a, an attack against them simply because of the crowds, or they're worried that their authority is being called into question. But the, the two groups that come to Jesus are a fairly strange mixture. You, you have the Herodians. Now, now, the Herodians, these are supporters of King Herod, right? These are people that are, are directly believing that the kingdom of Herod is a Israel, is a promised land kingdom, and is participating fully in that promise. Whereas the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, the Pharisees particularly in this case, they are they believe very, very deeply and truly that the kingdom needs to be independent and the Romans need to be gone. So now you have a group of people that think the Romans need to be ousted from the region and a group of people that are functionally serving as the arm of Rome in the region, one of the regional governors of, of Palestine, of that area. And they're coming together to trap Jesus. Well, you know, and the question that they ask the question that they ask is really all of it, right? Because if if you take that question, it could side with either of them. They go up to Jesus and they ask, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? Well, the Herodians are the tax the tax enforcers. They're the ones that levy the taxes for the Romans, and all of the money that, that, that's going to go to Rome is going to come through uh, Herod and his people. He's probably going to get a little bit off the top. That's where he gets his revenue for, for work and everything in between. So if Jesus answers that, no, it's not lawful, well, according to the Roman law, it is lawful. And according to that law and that rationale, it is the way that it's supposed to be. On the flip side, you have the Pharisees. Well, the Pharisees are not concerned so much with the Roman law. They think the Roman law is something that's being enforced from the outside. outside and the internal law, the, the, the law of Moses, the, the, the teachings of Moses, these are the essential bits of what it means to follow the Jewish way. And so if Jesus, if Jesus gets them and he, he answers, no, it is lawful to pay tax to the Caesar, they will get him on the technicality or the idea that this represents a betrayal of the Mosaic law. So either he has to break the Roman law or he has to break the Mosaic law. And, and he is stuck now and he has to come up with a solution that, that's neither of those. And Jesus, of course, answers splendidly, perfectly. He starts off with a question. He goes, you know, bring, bring me a, can you bring me a coin? And he gets a coin, you know, the, the image of the denarius. You know, he says, whose image is stamped on this coin? And, and they say, Caesar's. And Jesus says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and render to God what is God's. 
In the single step, he sideswipes both of them. He challenges them to, to move beyond their desire for a trap or their desire to serve as part of a, a political power in this world. And he moves them and says, you are bearers of the image of God. You are people that have the image of God stamped upon you. Bear to God what is God's. You know, this hits us as well. There are parts and times where we can, we can sympathize either with the Pharisees or the Sadducees in the story. Sometimes, uh, sometimes the Pharisees are the Herodians in the story. With the Pharisees, we can easily find ourselves in a place where we have engaged in such a, a legalism where we can't imagine living out our faith uh, in another way. And we, we have to keep it within that legalistic framework. And the, the danger there is, or, or that pattern framework, and, and the danger there is when, when God calls us to move and to see where he is doing and how to offer himself to us, sometimes we get caught up in, in our understanding, in our life, life livelihood, and the way we, we think it should go. And, and God is saying, no, we need to live according to his will. Render to God what is God's. In, in the same way, the, the Herodians can, can represent some of the things that we get caught up in and, and trapped in, in that the Herodians believe that, that the solutions to, to the problems are, are to have moral compromise, to, 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 to be engaged in the world too much, and, and to take that part and that role as a, a, as a right or a full revelation of who God is, trusting ourselves to money and to power, and, and all of a sudden, that goes away, and we're being told no. That's looking at a worldly perspective where we're trusting ourselves not to God or to his will. Not to the work he has called us to, to love our neighbor, but to our own selfish ambition. And so the Herodians and the, the Pharisees that might live in us to, to either go towards our selfish ambition or, uh, uh, ambition or to, uh, in, in a legalistic sort of way, be willing to risk all things, Jesus sidesteps them both and says, render to God what is God's. Now, in this season of, of coronavirus, I've noticed that, that people have tended towards judgment and condemnation of, of others. From, from everything, for, for political reasons, all the way across the spectrum uh, to to people that are hoarding toilet paper, judging people that are hoarding toilet paper, and everything in between. I, I, I've noticed that some people are, are so fearful and afraid because their, their world has been turned upside down that they're, they, they've obviously been placing their trust and their heart in the things of this world and, and their own habits and the way they've been living their life before this moment. And when God is calling them to something new, to look and see where God's going, we, we've been hesitant. And I understand this, and I think God has an immense compassion for us, because when we're, we're in a routine that's been toppled and turned over, when we're looking at the world and we're afraid, it's so easy to allow those fears to move us to judgment or to rejection. And right now, we can simply let those go and remind ourselves of the image of God that is stamped on us and upon our neighbors. And we can use this as an opportunity to love God, to love our neighbors in a different way, in, in a way that challenges us to move beyond our perception. Not to trust in our, our habits or the things of the past, but to trust that God in the midst of this can still work, can still use our hearts and our minds to, to show and to find ways to love one another. You know, one of the most amazing things about the being created in the image of God is, is this. God's image, whatever it is, has to bear one, one huge characteristic that is absolutely essential to understanding who God is. And that is, God is the creator of the world. God is the creator of the world. God is creativity itself manifested and, and God is so much more than that. 
And he has created you and me in that image. And that means to me, and I hope to you as well, that when we come upon a challenge, challenging situation, something that's difficult and something that's hard, say a pandemic, we have been given the resources and the heart that can find ways to be the kingdom of God, to be the hands and feet of Christ here and now, if we are willing to render to God what is God's. Please pray with me. Father, walk with us and speak to us in our hearts. Let us use our minds and our creativity that you have blessed us with to find ways to be your hands and feet while we're keeping one another safe. Father, may we not despair or, or judge or, or doubt, but Father, may we trust in you wholly and in your hope. And Father, help us to pray as your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Asbury, every week I give an invitation uh, to ask anyone who has yet to begin a relationship in Jesus Christ to come speak with me. Well, this time coming might not be possible. Well, coming to get here it might not be the, the best way to do it. But I still encourage you, if you have yet to begin a relationship with Jesus Christ, that you give me a call, that you reach out via email or Facebook, that you contact me, that we might begin that journey in your faith together. And I also want to reach out to those of you who might be anxious or afraid or just need someone to talk to. Give us a call here in the office. Give me a call and let us talk to and be, with, be there for you. You, even though we're physically alone, you are not alone. We are walking through this time together. And I encourage you, as part of this invitation, to find ways to serve. And I, I'm going to highlight three different ways to serve right now. To, to give blood, to go out and offer to drive meals on wheels, and to go pack up uh, boxes for the food pantry. These are three ways we can serve our community here and now. You can also reach out using the phone. For some of you, going out might not be a good option. Reach out using the phone. Go through your directory. Call every person on the list. Get a hold of them. Check on them. See how they're doing. And just chat. Just be there for one another. Sometimes it's not important what you talk about, but just that you talk to one another. And I encourage you to be neighbors for one another during this time. is a good word and usually we speak it as a, a word over 
each other as we're going out from the midst that we have. So as we are gathered in this virtual format, I offer you this benediction as you go out into the world. May you go in the peace of Christ that surpasses the understanding of this world. And may you in that peace rest assured in the hope that we have been given from God our Father. Amen.